Hello, I'm Zach Forey, field agronomist for DuPont Pioneer. Today we're going to talk about soybean aphids. We're going to talk about some different aspects of soybean aphids, the insect itself. We're going to talk about thresholds and scouting for the insect and treatment uh, of soybean aphid. So first of all, the insect. Soybean aphids are very small insects, light green insects. Uh, they're very small, but they are visible to the naked eye, and so they're, they're big enough that you can actually physically count them. The threshold for soybean aphids has been determined doing a lot of field research, counting aphids, determining when yield losses occur. The accepted threshold is 250 aphids per plant. That would be the economic threshold. Once we see an average of 250 aphids per plant on 80% or more of the plants in a field, that's when a treatment decision is determined. Uh, there's another term that we use called an economic injury level. The economic injury level is the population at which the, the losses exceed the cost of control. That population has been determined to be significantly higher. It's more like 450 to 650 aphids per plant, depending on what price you put for soybeans, what yield, and what cost of control you put in. And so why would the economic threshold be 250 aphids per plant when the economic injury level is way up at, at 450 to 650 aphids per plant. And the reason for that is that once you determine that you've got a problem population of soybean aphids, usually it takes some period of time before you can get a treatment applied, before you can get a, a sprayer out there, before you can get an aerial applicator uh, scheduled and that sort of thing. So the economic threshold is a number that gives us five to seven days in which to get a treatment applied before we end up with economic loss due to the pest. So let's talk about scouting for soybean aphids. We talked about that uh, there's 250 aphids per plant as the economic threshold. When do you start scouting? Uh, aphids can start to, to infest plants uh, as, when plants are relatively small. So we're typically beginning scouting, just, just looking at field edges and seeing if we've got aphid populations building uh, in late uh, June. And then into July and into August, we can still be scouting for soybean aphid. Now there comes a point later in the year at which you're really not going to increase yields by controlling aphids because the yield is already determined. And that's somewhere between R5 and R6. So once we start to get pods that are filled up on the top four nodes of the plant, uh, at that time when we have a pod that has a, a full seed in it on the top part of the plant, then we're at R6. And at R6, we're already at 95% of full yield potential. So it doesn't make sense to control uh, an aphid population later than R6. So somewhere between R5 and R6 is when we quit uh, scouting for soybean aphids. There are a lot of factors that influence the population of soybean aphids, and that's why repeated scouting a field is necessary. Uh, the, the weather affects uh, soybean aphid. They will reproduce the most rapidly if we have temperature conditions that are 75 to 85 degrees. Uh, in those kinds of temperatures, you can get doubling of aphid populations every two to three days, and that's the fastest that you'll see that reproduction rate happen. If you get warmer temperatures, that'll slow them down. Cooler temperatures will also slow them down. Heavy rainfall doesn't eliminate a population, but it can slow down the, the increase of that population. Soybean aphids also have a host of natural enemies in fields. One of those natural enemies would be Asian ladybird beetles. You see a lot of those beetles out in the field, they're eating soybean aphids and keeping those numbers down. Um, you can have soybean aphid populations that reach 100, 150 and you start to think about treatment and then you'll go out next time and that, that population may have collapsed. A lot of times that's due to uh, disease pests, fungal diseases that will spread throughout the population and wipe that population out. And so those are the reasons that scouting is so important with soybean aphid, that the populations can build rapidly but even when you've got higher populations, you can find times when that population collapses and you wouldn't need to treat because the natural enemies control the aphid population. We talked about the, the stages at which you want to scout for soybean aphids. Let's talk a little bit more about the scouting procedure itself. The first thing to do is just kind of monitor field edges. That's where you'll typically get the first buildup of aphid populations. And so if you monitor field edges and you're starting to see a significant amount of soybean aphids, that's an indicator to go out and start scouting within the field. So if you're seeing about 70% of the plants or so on the field edges that are showing aphid populations, then it's time to go out into the field and actually do some, some scouting infield and determine 
what those populations are throughout the field. And again, our threshold is, is an average of 250 aphids per plant on 80% or more of the plants that are in the field. So how do we actually scout for soybean aphids? We mentioned the threshold, 250 aphids per plant. That's a lot of aphids to count. Like I said, they're very small and you can see them. They'll develop in colonies that are pretty close together and they can be difficult to count. And counting a bunch of plants in a field to see if you have an average of 250 plants, aphids per plant, that's, that can take a lot of time and be difficult. Uh, the entomologists doing aphid research understood this, that this is, a, this is a good threshold, but actually scouting for it and implementing it will be challenging. And so they developed a method that's much easier to use to scout for soybean aphids called the speed scouting method. And there's a worksheet that you use, and if you go onto a search engine and you search for aphid speed scouting, you'll come up with this worksheet. And this worksheet makes scouting for aphids much more simple and rapid. You can literally scout fields just as fast as you walk. So let's demonstrate the speed scouting method that's been developed by researchers at the University of Minnesota. I've got my speed scouting worksheet right here on my clipboard. And so the first thing I do is I walk out into the field and I randomly pick one plant and I look to see if that plant has 40, less than 40 or more than 40 aphids per plant. Now for plants that have a few aphids, it might take a little while to calibrate yourself to see if it has less or more than 40. Pretty quickly, you're going to, to very quickly recognize that a plant has either less than 40 or more than 40. When I look at this plant that I just pulled, I have a few aphids on it, it's definitely less than 40. So I'm gonna put a, a minus there. Then I'm gonna walk 30 paces and I'm going to pick, randomly pick up another plant. And I'm gonna to look to see how many aphids are on that plant. And if I look at it and I see that it's got a, a lot of aphids on it, it's got some colonies on it, more than 40, I'm gonna plus, put a plus there. I'm gonna take another 30 paces in that field, randomly pick another plant, pull it up, and see if it's got less than or more than 40 aphids per plant. This one has less, and I put a minus there. So the first go around, I'm going to sample 11 plants. Just the way I talked about, going 30 paces, randomly picking a plant. If it has more than 40, I'm putting a plus. Less than 40, I'm putting a minus. So the first set of plants I did, based on the worksheet, 11 plants. And I determined whether they had more or less than 40 aphids per plant on it. When I got done, I ended up with eight plants that had more than 40 aphids on it. And when I look at my worksheet, it says that if I have six or less that I do not need to treat, come back in seven to 10 days and do another count. If I have five, uh, seven to 10 plants that have more than 40 aphids, that means that I sample another five plants. So that's what I would do in my case. I had eight that had more than 40 aphids. Now I'm gonna sample five more plants and do the same thing. Do they have more or less than 40 aphids per plant? So the next thing I do is I take 30 more paces, sample plants, 30 more, sample another plant and do five more plants and then come up with a number that have 40 or more aphids. In this case, I got three more plants that had 40 or more. So I have a total of 11 and I'm still in that category where it, it asks me to sample five more plants. I continue to do this until I either get a uh, don't treat and resample in seven to 10 days or I get a, a treat signal that I've got enough that it warrants treatment. And if I don't, by the end, the maximum I'm gonna sample is 31 plants. If at the end of sampling 31 plants, 23 to 26 of them are with 40 or more aphids, I'm still in that middle ground, and then I come back and sample the same field in three to four days, and determine at that point whether I get a do treat or a don't treat, or come back and later uh, and scout three or four days later signal. So we've gone through the speed scouting method and like I was saying, when you get maybe even just five or 10 minutes of practice doing this, you can scout as fast as you can walk. And so there's really no excuse for not scouting fields for soybean aphid. There's a tremendous number of fields that get treated unnecessarily, wasting money, wasting the grower's money, spraying for something that really hasn't reached economic threshold populations. Uh, at the same time, if you're not on top of it, not scouting, you can get in excess of of economic threshold populations and lose yield. And so scouting is something that, uh, that can be very easily learned 
and you can be very fast at it. So some of the other things people ask is, well, what if I use a seed treatment insecticide? Will that seed treatment insecticide protect that plant against soybean aphids? And the answer is that seed treatment insecticides have some activity on soybean aphids, but only early in the season. So about for the first 40 days or so would be the maximum length of time that you'd expect those seed treatment insecticides to help with soybean aphid. So it's possible that in, in, in fields where you get early season aphid pressure, that the seed treatments might be somewhat helpful. But uh, beyond that, uh, they really are not helpful. They do not control aphids later in the season and really aren't a good practice just for controlling soybean aphids. Another thing that growers will often ask is, does it make sense to put an insecticide in with a herbicide treatment when you're putting on that, that last application of herbicides? And the answer is that if you don't have economic thresholds of aphids, that that's really not a very good idea for a number of reasons. One is that you're wasting money. You're applying a product that you, you really you have to pay for that may not give you any return at all if you don't have soybean aphid populations. Also, it can make the situation work by controlling your natural enemies, and that can cause soybean aphid populations to explode even more rapidly. Uh, you can also see times when you, have, you apply a, an insecticide early, and then you end up having soy, soybean aphid pressure later, and you end up with two applications instead of one, because aphids can come in and reinfest even after you put on an insecticide, seed, uh, insecticide treatment, a foliar insecticide treatment. There are many foliar insecticides that are very good in controlling soybean aphid, uh, but none of them work for season, potentially season long. And so after the reentry interval has passed on that insecticide in about a week or 10 days, you wanna start scouting again for soybean aphids to see if those populations happen to be building up again. The insurance treatments also, uh, the ones you put on with your herbicide or if you don't have economic threshold populations, also put more selection pressure on the soybean aphid population and the more of those kinds of treatments that we have the more likely we are to see resistance development to those particular insecticides in the aphid population. Also a lot of times the kind of spray volumes and the equipment that you'd use to put on a herbicide are not all that suitable for an insecticide and so there are just a lot of reasons why putting an insurance treatment on or a, a, an insecticide treatment when you don't have uh, an economic threshold population of aphids is really not a very good idea. Here's a soybean plant that I pulled from this field and we've got some soybean aphid pressure here. This plant I determined had less than 40 aphids per plant. We've got uh, a couple of aphids on this pod right here and if we go here right toward the end of the plant early in the season, earlier in the season when we've got new growth that's where the aphids are going to start and the populations are going to be higher. Later in the season, those aphids are going to move down the canopy, and uh, so they'll be present in other parts on the stem and on lower leaves too. But you can see on this plant, the aphids are accumulated right on the end here, right where this new growth is, and you can see a colony of aphids there. And you can also see a ladybird beetle larvae, Asian, Asian beetle larvae, that's eating those aphids. And so this would be an example of one of the natural predators who's working away right now, consuming those, those soybean aphids. And if you apply insecticide treatment, when you don't have aphid populations, uh, one of the things that happens is you can uh, wipe out that beneficial insect population, uh, which can be detrimental uh, further, further down the year in terms of those aphid populations building up.